Hey guys, welcome to another C++ in game tutorial. Today we are finally learning about pointers. And pointers are really powerful, but they're really dangerous. When you're programming with raw pointers, you're basically programming without a condom. Things can go wrong in many different ways, but if you know what you're doing and you pay attention during these videos, these things probably won't go wrong, and if they do, you will know how to find out what is going on and how to fix it. So let's start off by learning about the memory address of variables. So let's make a variable int a. Now whenever we create this variable, it's not just magically appearing here, it actually gets allocated four bytes in memory somewhere. Now an integer is four bytes, so that's how we know it's going to be four bytes. Now we can actually figure out where in memory it's going to be. What we can do is see out the, ad the memory address of a. Now to get the memory address, we type the ampersand and then a, and then we'll do an indel. Now you'll notice this ampersand is the same operator that we use when we're passing parameters by reference, but it means something different, okay? It, 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 it's kind of related, but whenever you see it like this, not as a reference uh, parameter, it means we are getting the memory address of that variable. So this is going to return us a number uh, that is the address of A. So let's go ahead and run, and you'll notice I didn't initialize A to anything. But that's not, that doesn't matter. It still has memory allocated for it. So you'll notice we get this, this combination of letters and numbers. This is actually a hexadecimal number. I haven't taught you about hexadecimal numbers, but it's just like uh, binary or decimal. It's just instead of being base uh, 2 or base 10, it's base 16. I'll probably teach you uh, hexadecimal in the advanced C++ tutorials because it's, it's really important to know in computer science. So if we don't want to get a hexadecimal output, we can just cast it to an integer like this. So we can see the integer memory location in bytes of our uh, integer. So as you can see, our integer a exists at, uh, what is that, 11 million bytes in memory. So that's its memory address. So you can think of memory as one humongous array. And our int a happens to be at the spot 11 million or whatever. Uh, in bytes, and that's where it's allocated. And you'll notice that it's divisible by four, and that's important. Any, any, whenever you have a variable that's four bytes, it has to be aligned on a four byte boundary. So whatever your memory address is, it's going to be divisible by four. So let's do some other tricks. Let's see if we make another variable int b. We would expect this b to be four bytes after a, right? So let's go ahead and see if that works. So let's see out the address of a, and then the address of b. So address of B, yep, that's A, B and L. So when we run it, hopefully the address is going to be four bytes bigger. And as you can see, it is. They have the same memory address, except B is four bytes after A. And that's what we would expect because they're each four bytes and they are created one after another. Now you'll notice each time I run it, I get a different memory value. When your program allocates memory, it just picks basically random, uh, random segments of memory to put your variables in. It's not really important where they are, uh, from execution to execution, um, you can you can kind of just uh, you you typically don't actually need to know the address, but I'm just showing you how to know the address. Now, what this uh, comes in handy for is pointers. What a pointer is is it's a variable that stores an address. So what we do is we type int star pointer or something. So this is the variable name. So I'll call it my pointer. You can call it whatever you want. And this is an integer pointer. So all I did was made an integer variable basically, but added a star in front, and that makes it a pointer. Now right now, this is unallocated. Whenever you make a pointer, if you want to initialize it, actually you should always initialize your pointers, uh, you should initialize it to null like this. Now that, that's basically like setting it equal to zero. The reason you want to do this is because later on if you use the pointer, if you set it to null, then you're going to get what's called a null access violation, which your compiler will tell you uh, it, it'll, it'll pop up and be like, oh, null access violation, here's where it is. So it's easy to detect bugs. If you don't set this equal to null, then this my pointer is uninitialized. So it's got a random memory address, and you just might happen to access a memory address that you're allowed to use, and that's just, that's going to be bad, because you're going to be uh, causing bugs and you're not going to realize it. So we're going to initialize that to null, and let's go ahead and do something with it. So a pointer holds a memory address for a variable. You can think of it as pointing to a location of a variable. So we can say, uh, let's take my pointer and point it to A. Uh, let's start by initializing these variables so we have something to work with. So A 
equals 5, b equals 10, something like that. We may not use both, but we have them. So let's set my pointer to have the address of a. So just like right here where we type ampersand a, we say my pointer equals the address of a, like that. So now my pointer has the memory address of a. And what's special about a pointer is it doesn't just hold the memory address. It also allows you to access the variables, the, the a variable. So what we can do is if we want to access the a variable is we can say, we'll do c out and we say star my pointer. This star right here is the dereference operator. This is the reference operator. This is the dereference operator. And what it does is it says, take the address that my pointer is holding and return us the value that it's pointing to. And since we know this is an integer, then what we're going to do is look at that four bytes uh, that, uh, that is allocated for A. We're going to look at that four bytes and interpret it as an integer because it's an integer pointer. It's pretty simple. So if we do C out star my pointer end L and we run that, this is going to give us a five because A is holding five. There we go. So, so our, our variable, uh, what is it? Our variable my pointer is pointing to the address of a. Now what's special about this is this isn't a unique copy of a. This is pointing to a. So if we set a equal to 500 right here, uh, let's actually do two see out statements. Let's see out my pointer with a 5 and then we'll set a to 500 and see out my pointer again. Now we didn't do anything to my pointer. My pointer is still pointing to the same memory address. However, we changed the value of a, which is what my pointer is pointing to. It's the address that it's holding. So when we run this, we should get first a 5 and then a 500 because it uh, all it does is it points to our a variable. So if we make any changes to a, then the changes happen in our my pointer. Now this is another way to do pass by by reference is to use pointers. So we can have a void uh, add one. So this will add one to whatever variable we add. Now normally we could have said like int a uh, with an ampersand like that and that would work. We also could say int star a and pass a pointer. It's just another way to do by reference uh, because it's passing an address uh, of the original variable. It's sending It's basically sending a pointer that's pointing to your original variable. So let's go ahead and try that. So we'll do right here instead of a equals 500 We'll say, oh, I need to uh, do my little forward declaration up here. There we go. So we're going to say add one with, uh, we'll say with A, like that. So we're going to pass in the A pointer to add one. And then we are going to see out the result of that. And we're getting an error. Oh, I passed A. We want to pass my pointer. We're passing the pointer to A because that's what this takes right here. So if we want to modify a variable, we could, we could do this. We could say the value pointed to by a uh, plus equals 5. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and run our, our, our little program. We should get 5 and then 10. There we go. We get 5, 10. Pretty, oops, I always do that. Pretty simple stuff. So if you want to get the value of a pointer, you use the dereference operator, this star. And what that does is it lets you access the original variable, which in this case is a. And remember, even though I called this a, it could be called something different. This could have been called c. It's just a parameter, remember, or, or pointer or something like that. It could be called whatever it, it needs to be. It doesn't have to have the same name as the original variable. And this is just another way to do by, by reference passing. So we're going to learn a little bit more in the next episode about pointers. This is basic pointers. Next we're going to learn how to allocate uh, memory uh, on the heap for new variables. And actually you don't know what the heap is yet. So we might actually go over stack versus heap first. So you can play around with these with uh, passing by reference and, and kind of see how it works. Um, and we will learn about, we'll do stack and heat next. I have decided. All right. Thanks guys. Bye-bye.